My name is Rex Facer, and I'm honored to be able to share with you a short video in the BYU Principles of Impact series. In this video, I will share with you the Romney Institute's Principles of Governance, our AAA model. Several years ago, my colleagues in the Romney Institute started a conversation to articulate what makes our worldview on governance different. How can we share our perspective in a way that allows us to communicate clearly with others around the world? We look to the approaches to governance that are commonly used around the world. For example, in a UN report, governance was defined as, quote, the process of decision making and the process by which decisions are implemented or not implemented, close quote. We, not, we thought our perspectives could add, could enhance the conversation around governance. So we went to work and developed a couple of different models to articulate our view. Unfortunately, those models ended up being relatively complicated and hard to explain in a straightforward way. They were also difficult to remember. We then turned to our advisory board for guidance. The most valuable, and might I add troubling feedback we received was to throw out the complicated models and focus on what really matters. As we recovered from being reminded that this should be about making a difference, not creating a scholarly model that describes governance, we regrouped and focused on our core belief that everyone deserves to be treated with dignity and respect. This led us to our fundamental goal of pursuing human flourishing. As we settled on this fundamental purpose, we asked ourselves, what should drive decisions that lead to flourishing? There are many factors we could consider, such as the public service values of respect for the law, impartiality, economy and effectiveness, equity, compassion, and responsiveness, among others. However, we wanted to dig down to the core of what should fundamentally guide decision-making that would promote human flourishing. We examined a broad range of sources and eventually concluded that there are three core principles above all else that should guide the governance of organizations. These principles are agency, accountability, and agape. Over the last five years, I've had the opportunity to share these principles in a variety of settings. I've shared them with a community group in Ghana, at a global conference in Kazakhstan, at the United Nations in New York, with professional associations and small workshops with students and scholars in Taiwan. These principles and the fundamental purpose of promoting human flourishing have resonated in each of these settings. I believe this is because my colleagues have truly tapped into core values that drive decision making by exceptional leaders. Let me take a few minutes and talk about the four elements of our model. First, the objective of human flourishing, then the core principles of agency, accountability, and agape. If the objective is to promote human flourishing, we need to first be clear on what it means. The ancient philosophers, such as Plato and Aristotle, called a flourishing life eudaimonia, essentially the inherent capacity of each person to live a life of happiness, well-being, love, and compassion, essentially a good life. Recent scholarship by Seligman highlights that to flourish, people need to have positive emotions, engage with the world, develop meaningful relationships, find meaning in their lives, and accomplish their goals. In order to facilitate and encourage human flourishing as highlighted by Seligman, we need to act purposefully. We should seek to promote human flourishing in all aspects of our lives. To do this, we need to utilize guiding values and principles in our interactions. The first of these principles is agency. In public administration communities, we often use the word agency as a noun. Typically, it is a government department that provides a service. Alternatively, it is sometimes seen as describing the action that occurs between a principal and their agent. When the agent acts on behalf of another, they are exercising agency. When we use the term agency, however, we mean the ability to choose and act willfully. As Christofferson argued, to exercise agency, quote, we must not only have alternatives, but we must also know what they are. If we are unaware of the choices available, the existence of those choices is meaningless to us." Close quote. We have all had times where we were asked to make meaningless choices. Those choices are of no consequence. They don't tap into agents and develop agency. I often think about Alice's exchange when the Cheshire, with the Cheshire cat when I think of choices of no consequence. Alice starts by asking the cat, would you tell me, please, which way I ought to go from here? 
the cat responds, that depends a good deal on where you want to get. To which Alice notes, I don't much care where. The cat surmises, then it doesn't matter which way you go. Alice then continued her response, so long as I get somewhere. The cat confirmed, oh yes, you will surely do that, if only you walk long enough. So not only do we need to be able to make a choice, we need to have some idea of the objective, what we are trying to accomplish. Further, we need to know that, there's, that there are viable alternatives to accomplishing our objective, and we need to have sufficient information about the alternatives to make an informed and accountable choice. The power of agency is not solely in the ability to make a choice, but in the ownership and responsibility for that choice. The second principle, accountability, is a term we frequently hear in the governance space. Accountability is commonly defined as, quote, the obligation of power holders to account for and take responsibility for their actions, close quote. Our desire is for, ex is for accountability to be expanded such that the number of power holders grows as more people are provided with meaningful opportunities to exercise agency and to then be responsible for their choices. Accountability is a valuable tool to combat corruption and other practices that weaken institutions and the rule of law. Unfortunately, accountability has often been used as a club to achieve submission, not growth and development, and most definitely not to help individuals flourish. Our desires for accountability to not simply improve performance and strengthen institutions, although we believe it will do both. Our desire is for accountability to be used as the mechanism to connect actions and outcomes that will promote learning and growth that will lead to greater flourishing. The principle of accountability is not the simple ability to punish someone for not meeting standards. It's an opportunity to create an environment that seeks honest conversations about performance that doesn't hide from scrutiny. The third principle, agape, should really drive the way agency and accountability are implemented. Agape, a Greek word for love or concern for others, is often defined as an unconditional or self-sacrificing love. Yao notes, that, quote, agape is not a longing for possessions or worth, but a generous move by one person for the sake of another, close quote. It is an outward orientation similar to the Confucian concept of Ren, which is often translated in English as humaneness. It is the highest Confucian virtue in that when cultivated, it leads to benevolence and care for others. Nurturing a love and concern for others builds on our fundamental belief that we must value and honor the dignity and worth of all people. Individuals whose actions are driven by agape never forget that each of us is a person of dignity and worth. We should make choices not just to maximize our self-interest, but more importantly to demonstrate that we care about others. Agape doesn't require a lack of accountability as a show for mercy. Accountability guided by agape drives decisions by taking into account the individual while not relinquishing responsibility. As we bring these three principles together, agency, accountability, and agape, we believe they will not only improve our ability to work together for the common good, but they will lead to flourishing. Flourishing by our employees, by those we serve, as well as those we represent. I challenge you to consciously find ways to integrate the AAA principles into your organizations. As you have experiences with the AAA principles, please share your stories about the impact agency, accountability, and agape have had on flourishing in your organizations and with those you're engaged with every day. We hope you're able to make a difference. The principles of impact are brought to you by Brigham Young University's George W. Romney Institute of Public Service and Ethics, the home of BYU's MPA program that seeks to make an impact on public service.